Welcome back to The Handy Landlord. The last six videos that I posted here on YouTube were of me turning one of my rental properties. If you don't know, a turn is whenever a your current tenant moves out and you're getting the property ready for a new tenant. That process is called a turn. Um, I called it a quick turn because I actually had to have it done for um, by August 1st because I was actually going on vacation not to mention I didn't want to miss out on August rent so I ended up getting the property rented for August 1st so I wanted to go over the numbers I did sign a mutual rescission with the tenant basically letting her out of the lease um, she was a section 8 tenant so I let her out of the lease so I collected $1,500 from her that did cover some of the repairs but not all of them and then also in that mutual rescission I required her to call in the meter reading and pay the outstanding water bill uh, that was quite a situation so whenever I initially walked through the property whenever the tenant was still there I found that or I actually took a picture of the water meter reading which is uh, pretty standard for me to do and then I call in just to confirm that you know they've paid that amount so I reached out to the tenant several times um, trying to figure out if she paid the water bill uh, there was a bunch of confusion on the water meter reading so um, ends up that uh, I found that the wire, I did some investigation for myself, uh, found out that the wire inside of a sealable wire nut is actually cut. Sorry, there's a fly that keeps flying around in here. It's driving me crazy. The way that it works is the meter, the inside meter actually reports to an outside box and that's what the water company picks up is the outside box, not the inside actual water meter reading so if they cut that wire it doesn't report to the outside box anyways long story short she had an outstanding balance of fourteen hundred dollars on that i did end up having to pay a 22 dollar water bill of the tenants it's weird how it works here i everybody i talk to says that the way the water works here is crazy but anyways, I did end up having to pay a $22 water bill. My advice to anyone that is letting someone out of the lease or anything to go slow, uh, make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's because you don't want it to cost you a bunch of money uh, and let somebody out of the lease. So uh, turns out that uh, the property was a little bit worse than what I thought. I did not, when I initially walked through the property, I did not think that I would have to replace the carpet. I ended up replacing the carpet and the total for that was $1,204. That's carpet, some padding, and um, labor to install it. Hands down, the nastiest carpet I've ever removed in my seven years of doing this. Two years and four months is how long the tenant lived there. I could not believe the condition of the carpet. I mean, two years and four months, normally I wouldn't even have to replace the pad. I would normally, a lot, most of the time I could just go in and clean the carpet and then put new, you know, maybe do some patching, put new in a room, what maybe like one room that had a bad stain, but no, I ended up replacing the entire house. Ooh, fresh carpet, baby. Yeah. So it was quite a struggle for me to get carpet laid in this property. It's heartbreaking to me because I knew that I was going to cut into my budget big. I was trying to get this turn done for as minimal as possible. Um, I did hire an HVAC tech that uh, I was a little disappointed in. They showed up in a Hyundai with no equipment. The AC ended up having a leak and I called the regular guy that I used. Uh, it came out, the total cost on that was $1,100. They actually had to replace the A-coil inside and then recharge the system. Uh, got that done. Uh, my total for everything, carpet, paint, miscellaneous materials, uh, cleaning fee. The total for all of that was actually $3,211 minus the $1,500 um, that I collected from the tenant to sign the mutual rescission. So my total cost for this was $1,714. Um, that's probably the cheapest turn in my history of doing this. Um, I don't have any labor costs for myself in there. I was actually there for five days um so about 50 hours probably i actually rented the place for 1300 dollars. now it still has to go through section 8 process unfortunately it could be 90 days before i see my first check hopefully it's only 60 or 1300 is what it initially that fly is driving me nuts 1300 is what it initially got approved for so um 
We'll see if that all pans out and comes through. I was renting the property for $1,215. And then if it gets bumped up to 13, then that's a increase. Uh, none of the repairs that were really done were uh, improvements. They were really just uh, repairs, unfortunately. I mean, nothing was really improved. It was just fixing it up so the next tenant could live in there i did end up making it on vacation vacation's a lot of fun but as a landlord um it's a little bit tough so i've been playing catch up ever since i've been back and that's why i haven't been posting any videos but hoping to get you guys uh some more content i do have a pretty cool little gadget here that i'm really anxious to try out and i do have some repairs on my rigid drain machine that i use um if you don't know uh if you want to be a landlord and you're gonna do most of the repairs yourself. Uh, plumbing, I'm telling you, plumbing is hands down the biggest call that I get. I um, hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, just trying to share some of my numbers with you guys. I was uh, really happy that the property initially got approved for $1,300. We'll see if that all pans out and comes through. Um, that's an increase from the 1215. So yeah, hopefully you guys found this useful. Uh, stay tuned for future videos.